hello hello fine people of youtube now as well as dtube bitshoot and library all these platforms are where you can find es tech media's videos i am your host with the most jay and you are watching ds tech media you can also find us at these wonderful social media platforms minds gab twitter and mastodon i will post the links in the video description today we're going to be talking about which linux distribution is the best for new users and when you ever you ask this question you're bound to get two answers ubiquitously and those are Ubuntu and Linux Mint when you're new to Linux uh, the first thing you're going to have to address is which distro you're going to be uh, selecting and in this case we're going to be picking between Ubuntu and Linux Mint but it should also be mentioned that distros also have flavors and specific releases now what is a distro? a distro is basically a prepackaged setup of software based atop the GNU Linux platform the main di di uh, difference between them would be the desktop environment typically so with Ubuntu we have all these flavors Kubuntu uh, uses the KDE Plasma workspace Lubuntu uses the LXDE environment uh, Ubuntu Budgie uses uh, it's a pretty new desktop environment Budgie then there's Ubuntu Studio which basically focuses on media and content creation Ubuntu Mate which uses the uh, Mate environment or Mate environment which is sort of like an older setup Zubuntu uses the XFCE now these two Lubuntu and Zubuntu are for more lightweight setups so for less powerful computers and then there's Ubuntu Kylin which is aimed at Chinese users another important thing to note is not listed here is the vanilla Ubuntu setup which uses the GNOME shell some people refer to it as GNOME 3 on the Linux Mint side you've got the cinnamon edition which there is no official cinnamon edition of Ubuntu and then we have the Mate edition which uses the same desktop environment as Ubuntu Mate and the XFC edition which uses the same environment as Zubuntu now the difference between them is which pre-packaged software and configurations that they choose to ship also it's uh, important to mention that Linux Mint is actually based on Ubuntu they are in fact the same base operating system with some little changes in configuration and the software that they ship with we're going to be using the cinnamon edition of Linux Mint 19 and for this demonstration we're going to be testing a fresh install of Ubuntu 18.04 okay and here we are this is a fresh install showing you how to navigate the new interface and they of course offer the uh, Ubuntu live patch service and uh, if you want to you can participate in gathering system info and we can use software to install awesome third-party apps like these out of the box we get 
Thunderbird Firefox. So Thunderbird is the mail client. And of course Firefox is our web browser. Or we've got a file manager. So files, uh, I think they're still using Nautilus as their their file manager. Rhythmbox is the included uh, music player. One of the first things that I like to do is dis disable this alternative toolbar, but I disable uh, the alternative view plugin because I think that uh, the regular view is much better and because it hides the volume slider which is crazy to me but as you can see it's got support for uh, album art if your files are actually missing the album art it'll look it up for you it used to be that you could get other plugins I thought um, there may be some that we can search for online but once again we're looking at for the regular user so the one that I was hoping would be here was the EQ plugin but it's not here another plugin is that it appears here in Ubuntu's notification uh, section. This is actually the music player that I use on my actual Ubuntu install. We've got LibreOffice Writer, which is a part of the entire LibreOffice suite. This, of course, is LibreOffice, which is the most popular open source Office application. And these are all of the applications that ship with it. We've got Cheese for managing uh, the webcam, a calculator, uh, the ever controversial Amazon app. Let's see what we got for calendar. So we can add a new event, set reminder, uh, set it to recur daily, weekly, monthly. We can show weather as they show here. Pretty cool. And we can have separate calendars. And we can sync calendars from Microsoft Exchange, Nextcloud, or Google Calendars. Very nice, very nice. And let's go to Activities View. So, one thing Linux has had for a long time that is a very awesome feature is virtual desktops so now we have four separate virtual desktops that we can switch between at any time uh, I find it particularly useful if you're on a laptop also if we hit the Windows key we can just type to search here we go we've got a, a to-do application Okay, so we can make lists and mark them as done. And we, we have the whole LibreOffice suite, so LibreOffice Calc, LibreOffice Draw, LibreOffice Impress, LibreOffice... Uh, writer. Power usage statistics. Remina is a remote desktop viewer. We've got some games, Mahjong. Uh, the Simple Scan for scanner software. Shotwell is a, a very cool uh, photo manager. It can also improve photos.
software and updates, software updater, startup applications. We can analyze disk usage. We got the Deja Dupe uh, backup utility, which is not as user friendly as it could be, in my opinion. This is Deja Dupe backup system uh, like I said it's not the most intuitive backup system I've ever used but if you read the guide online it, it can still be helpful the totem video player so to demonstrate the video player uh, totem I decided to download a video out of my next cloud and I'm greeted with this message, uh, H264, the high profile decoder is required to play the file, but it's not installed. Find in Ubuntu software. Unable to find requested software. And if I was a new user, I'd probably be giving up by now. In this case, I do know what is the missing uh, codec. Wow, there are so many of them. Uh, this, I believe, is one of the things that Linux Mint tries to do automatically so that new users don't face these types of problems. I've now installed all of the uh, GStreamer packages. I believe there were like 11 of them. Let's hope this works. We're going to talk about... And it does. This is still a ridiculous uh, situation to put a new user in. Um, one anecdotal situation is that I've actually done this before while recording this video. And the last time I clicked the find in Ubuntu software and it actually did find it listed 4G streamer packages, installed them all, and this played fine. So. I don't know, it's, it's, it's very strange. Totem also allows you to adjust uh, brightness, contrast, saturation, and hue. You can disable deinterlacing. It's got uh, advanced audio settings for 4 through 5.1 and AC3 pass through. Supports subtitles and has all of these uh, interesting plugins so we can rotate videos that are in the wrong orientation supports infrared remote it has a disc recorder zeitgeist which is a ubuntu feature that pretty much remembers everything that you've done recently and it has an automatic subtitle downloader most people usually uninstall it and simply use VLC but um, I've actually enjoyed using it since Ubuntu 14.04 days I like its simplicity uh, that's uh, image viewer we can take screenshots we've got like a document PDF viewer GNOME disks an archive manager, font manager, uh, keyboard characters, logs, help, passwords, and what have you. Uh, this would be the system manager. I mean, monitor, I'm sorry. Alright, so we've got nothing running right now. We're using 1.3 gigabytes of memory. So, interesting statistic to keep in mind for comparison. A lot of people consider GNOME shell to be a little resource heavy. Uh, the startup disk creator is for making uh, another uh, Linux live USB for testing purposes and install installing. And we've, I mean, we've got everything you need out of the box. Let's look at our settings here. Displays, keyboard shortcuts, mouse controls, configure printers, what to do when we're installing USB drives and everything. Uh, I don't have a Thunderbolt port on this system, so we've got Wacom tablet support, 
course color cal calibration. Bluetooth, we can change our backgrounds. Here we can set the auto hide function on the dock, which is this over here. And we can move it on screen to wherever we would like. Set notification pop-ups and decide whether they show up on the lock screen. What is included in the search and that's by hitting the uh, Windows key we can search for anything so and see it, it's looking at settings. Let's say we wanted to find GIMP. We don't have it installed. There it is in Ubuntu Software Center. Online accounts we can add Ubuntu SSO Google, Nextcloud, Facebook, Microsoft, Flickr, Pocket, Foursquare, Microsoft Exchange, Todoist, IMAP, and SMTP, which are email, and Kerberos, which is an enterprise login protocol. Once we configure the accounts and the settings, they will actually become available in some of the applications, such as the calendar for Google accounts and the to-do list for our Google accounts and for the Todoist account. Screen lock, location services, usage and history, purge, trash and temporary files, problem reporting set to manual, connectivity checking, it's all in your privacy settings and we can apparently share our screen for remote access, got our sound controls, power controls, networking, proxy, and VPN. So there's all of your, your basic settings. Now let's uh, have a look at the software center. So let's say we wanted Steam. So this is basically like a installer script for Steam. These are all the updates available at the moment. So after trying to launch the Steam installer script, nothing happened. And I noticed on the Ubuntu store, these comments mentioning that issue. The user also proposed that launching Steam from the terminal would fix the problem. But Steam wasn't even installed, so I had to sudo app install Steam. So right there, um, I tried to do the graphical installation of Steam and I had to revert to the terminal. Not exactly user friendly. Okay, so we can install Skype. And this is a snap package, so So I was able to install Steam, but I had to do it through sudo apt install through the terminal, whereas the graphical installer failed or just didn't launch. I'm not sure what happened there. Now if we wanted to customize the way the system looks, we would have to... I think, we, yeah, we'd need GNOME tweaks, which is going to give us more... Uh, control over the way everything looks. So we can change our icons and all, but we have to install those themes in order to do that. And then we can also add extensions, and extensions are one of the best parts of GNOME are the GNOME extensions. So let me, I'm gonna go try and give you a demonstration. And I can't even seem to get the extensions working, which is ridiculous. And the th things like this are why it's hard to recommend Ubuntu to someone who's never used Linux. Now, if the person who is 
trying Linux out is a bit tech savvy. It's a different story. Uh, my first real experience with Linux was Ubuntu 14.04 using Unity and I spent a lot of time learning but I was able to pick it up quite well. Other than that I really do love uh, the GNOME shell just to so I can give you an idea of what it's like once you do have it working. So this is my actual physical Ubuntu desktop and this was the extension I was trying to install the weather extension. I will show you my tweaks. These are all of my extensions that I have installed. There are many of them and normally you'd be able to add them right from within Firefox because of the GNOME shell integration for Firefox. Not sure why it wasn't working there but I mean to me that's just an example of something that a new user would encounter that they shouldn't have to deal with. Also, uh, I wanted to say uh, Ubuntu Mate is much more suitable for new users. It's created by a gentleman who works for, uh, he works on Ubuntu officially. I'm not sure if he works for Canonical, but his name is Martin Wimpress, and he designed it to be easy to use for his entire family. Now we're going to be looking at Linux Mint. And right off the bat, I want to look at the memory usage. Ubuntu with GNOME Shell was using 1.2, 1.3 gigs of memory, whereas Linux Mint, right off the bat, is using 8.30 megabytes. So it's pretty significant. And of course, I meant to do them equally. I forgot to change that one to four cores, where this one, we do have four cores. I think it ran pretty snappily though. Okay, so welcome to Linux Mint. This will guide you through your first steps and show you how to find help and where to get more information. In the name of the development and everyone involved in the project, we'd like to thank you for choosing Linux Mint and we hope you enjoy using it as much as we enjoy working on it. Have a great time and don't hesitate to send us your feedback. Alright, so we've got System Snapshots, which this is Time Shift, which is an awesome backup utility. Uh, it takes uh, incremental uh, snapshots of the system so that you can actually revert back to prior states, which is something that Ubuntu does not include out of the box, so you can in install it. Let's go ahead and launch that. And you can use rsync or uh, butterfs. I'm not sure if this will really matter to new users. They probably should just use rsync. Uh, this is an awesome backup tool. So I actually checked into this and you can only use the butter file system if you have your operating system installed on a butterfs file system partition. So if I were to start a backup right now, I would have to use rsync. The functionality, however, is the same between the two. It's just the method. And the reason why time shift is so great is the ability to roll back, but also the way it works is is you make a first backup and that's the the largest backup you make. Every uh, incremental backup you do after that only records changes to that original image and this saves space because you can have all of the revisions to your system just like on a Windows and I guess even on a Mac machine so that you're not wasting all the space with huge full backups. Uh, the driver manager which I'm pretty sure this is also included with uh, Ubuntu. Linux Mint is actually based on Ubuntu. So they are the same system with just 
completely different setups and configurations atop of that system. This is based on Ubuntu 1804. So yeah, no proprietary drivers as I expect. Update manager. And we can choose traditional or modern layouts. They give you that choice right from the opening. And it, look at that, smooth, smooth, smooth. So let's try and install Steam from Linux Mint. Let's see how that goes. And this would be called uh, window snapping. And they have a graphical firewall manager, which I don't believe Ubuntu had this. Firefox is our default browser. And Nemo is our file manager. So we're not going to spend a lot of time on the file manager. There's Steam, and look. The graphical installer for Steam worked fine with Linux Mint. And here's our settings. And right away, of course, we've got the backgrounds. We can manage the an animations and effects. We can change our themes. And the way our buttons look. Well, the way our windows look, and even the entire desktop. Here's the default cinnamon desktop. Uh, let's see, we've got applets, which was not included with Ubuntu. And, okay, we've got a workspace switcher with some annoying sounds, which I'm sure we can, uh... And the applets are basically little add-ons that go in the panel. Let's see, we've got extensions, which none are included by default, but we can download them. Yeah, we've got a bunch of, not a lot, but a few to choose from. Hot corner settings. We can manage, we've got more uh, notification settings. They even include screen savers. Not as much uh, privacy settings though. We can uh, change our panel, change the height, uh, change the way it looks, add new panels. Make the panel hide or always visible. But we can change our window settings. Bluetooth, color calibration, displays, graphics tablet, which is a Wacom tablet. Driver manager, firewall, login window, which they didn't have the ability to configure the login window on Ubuntu, as far as I know. Now this is interesting. Ubuntu is the founder, you know, the originator of PPAs or personal package archives and as far as I'm aware there's no was no uh, simple graphical way to add PPAs to uh, Ubuntu the one we were just using usually PPAs will be added from the command line anyway and they're not exactly the safest thing for people who don't know what they're doing so maybe that's why they chose not to include them but here's a graphical way to add PPAs. Uh, PPAs are usually hosted on Launchpad, which is a canonical website where uh, software repositories are hosted. So those are all nice little um, additions. Just a lot more configuration of how the system looks and acts for the user. A lot of people, one of the things they like most about Linux is the ability to customize. So we've got, so on Ubuntu, the image viewer, uh, we've got a USB image writer and formatter. Uh, Tomboy Notes is here, which is a note-taking application. Kind of acts like a wiki setup for notes. Uh, we got a calendar. 
Yeah, the same calendar that was available in Ubuntu. Oh, which reminds me, let's look at the settings again. Online accounts, here we are. Same ones we had on Ubuntu. LibreOffice Suite is included. We installed Steam, both have Thunderbird. I don't know if I mentioned it, but uh, Transmission is a BitTorrent client that was also available in Ubuntu out of the box. Rhythmbox and this media player, this is the X media player. Between Totem and X, there's probably not a lot of difference. However, they also include BLC media player, which is very much preferred by people on Linux. It's very powerful. It's much more than just a video and media player. Okay, so here's an important one. They ship with GIMP 2.8 out of the box. Uh, Ubuntu didn't include any uh, drawing or paint program. I think that's something that a new user might find a very interesting. Simple scan, same as Ubuntu, and then there's the Pix picture manager, I guess, whereas Ubuntu ships with Shotwell. Uh, disk usage and driver manager. Software manager, an important uh, distinction. Linux Mint lets you use, uh, I think they have flat packs, whereas Ubuntu includes snap packages. They're basically two separate solutions to accomplish the same thing. It's a, a way to package software to be installed across all versions of Linux. Snaps is created by Canonical, who creates Ubuntu. Whereas Flatpaks is created by Gnome Project. They make most of the software that we're looking at right now on both of the operating systems. Let's see what else. Desklets, which were not available on Ubuntu. Let's see. Okay, so there's like a little clock there we can add. And this can be a launcher for any program, apparently. And there's a digital photo frame. We don't have any photos to add to it. So we have a specific flat pack section here. These are all flat pack installers, which is very cool that they're distinct from the uh, rest of the software. I think we we have to actually add snap supports if we want to install snap packages same with ubuntu we'd have to probably add flat pack support i would say that linux mint is just overall much easier for people who are not uh so much tech savvy just a lot a lot easier for them to approach compared to uh to ubuntu okay so i would say that linux mint is the clear winner here for people who are, are new if you're a more tech savvy person you're ready to learn with a steeper learning curve maybe you like the way ubuntu gnome looks better i personally prefer ubuntu with gnome over linux mint but uh yeah let me know what you think uh, is there anything that i missed or anything you think i need to work on with my uh, content I'd uh, be glad to hear from you. Please like, share, and subscribe, and leave a comment. Spent a lot of time working on these videos, and I'm really working hard to get the Aztec Media to grow. I thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.